In this calm, step-by-step, -step, in-depth tutorial, we are going to use MailChimp to set up our email marketing. We will be covering every aspect of MailChimp, so as an absolute beginner, you will be up and running in no time. On the website of MailChimp, we click on this yellow button, Start Free Trial. In this tutorial, we will be covering the free plan over here, so click Sign Up Free. Here we need to fill in your own business email, like this. You cannot use your own free email to send emails like Gmail or Hotmail. That's not possible. If you don't have your own domain name yet, follow the first minutes of this tutorial and I'll show you exactly how to set up your own domain name plus your own email address. It's really easy and it doesn't even cost you that much money. Fill in a very strong password over here. And click this if you don't want to receive emails from MailChimp. Then we press sign up. Then we have to verify our email address. Click on this button, activate account. And then we need to fill in this information. And don't worry, you can always change this later in the settings. Your phone number is not mandatory, but it's recommended. We're gonna skip this for now, so press next. Then we need to fill in our business address. Why? Because it's the anti-spam laws. We actually need to do this. And then we press on next. Then select the top goal you want with MailChimp. I'm gonna select the top one. It's not that important. I'm just very interested in the advanced reporting. Press next. And we need to select how many email contacts we have. I'm starting with 0 to 500 as we're just starting out with this journey. Press next. We're gonna sell via our own website. Or maybe you want to do it via Amazon or Etsy or whatever. Press next. If you already have a website, you can enter it right here. And then we click on next and they're gonna try to fetch our logo and all these kind of stuff. Should be nice. Press next. Then we're gonna select the free plan in here. The MailChimp is going to prepare our account for us. And then we are here, welcome at your MailChimp dashboard. I'm going to walk you through all these settings on the left side so you know exactly how to set up your forms, how to create an audience, how to set up emails and send them out. No worry, we're going to do this all in this tutorial. Now before we can send out any emails, the first things we need to have is actually a mailing list. To do that, we go to audience in here, click on this, and then we are at the audience dashboard in here. Now let's just walk through all these things. Let's go to all context in here. We are now at the overview tab. In here you can see all your context. Currently I have none. Let me show you how that looks when you have actual context. Let's add in a contact, add a single subscriber. Here we go. We're just gonna fill in the email address, the first name and the last name. I don't gonna fill in the address because I don't do offline marketing, so I'm not very interested in their address. I do, however, interested in the country they're in. So in our case, USA. And then what's also very interesting is a birthday. If you can collect birthday items, it can be very interesting if you're having a store, for example, so you can give them birthday discount. That would be very nice. So I'm just gonna put in the 1st of January. Then you can add a tag to a subscriber. I'm gonna tell you more about that later on when we are creating our sign-up forms. Now, this person gave me permission and we're gonna press on subscribe. Mission accomplished, it was successfully added. If you now go to all contacts, you can see that we have one subscriber in our contact list. As you can see, the contact rating is very important. These stars are actually very interesting. They will give you a rating if they've opened your emails or if they've clicked on emails. The better they interact with your campaign sent out, the better the rating gets. Now, why is this important? If you have too much context, you can sort them on the contact rating and you can actually find the people that never open your emails and you can delete them from your list so you get a fresher and healthier email list. On the manage contacts tabs, we are here to view contacts. You can also archive them. So if you click on this one, you can select all the email addresses you want. You can add or remove tags, but you can also unsubscribe them, unsubscribe them from SMS, resubscribe them, make them a VIP, or archive them entirely and you won't see them in this list. And that's what you can see over here, the archived context. 
you can also select the groups, the segments or the tags, import history, export them and export all your context and archive all context. If you click on this button, you can archive all your audiences. Then on the next step, we can add subscribers manually. But there's also one to import context. If we click on this one, we can add context to import them from another servers. We can upload a file from a CSV or TXT file, or we can just copy and paste them inside of MailChimp. So let me show you how it works. If you press on continue, if you're using one of these integrations, you can click add and then it will guide you through the process of importing them. As we are starting fresh, I don't think you have that. You can also upload a file. If you click on this one and you press on continue, you need to upload a CSV file. I had a bit of troubles with entering this file. If you click on learn how, there is a good explanation of how to do this. But when I tried this, I never came to this. I only saw one column, whatever I tried. So this actually doesn't work the way it should work or I'm doing something wrong. Now let's get back to choose method because what we can also do is just copy and paste them, which is way more easier. Press continue. Just click over here and paste in all your email address, your first name and your last name you have but you need commas to separate each field. For example, like this comma, here we go. No, we don't want this, so delete this one. And once you've done this, we press on continue to organize. Then we need to organize your contacts. We only can select one audience as we have the free plan. Then we're gonna select the subscribed status and here you can choose to update any existing contacts. If this email address is already in your list, then it will be updated with the latest data. Press continue to tag. Here we can add in tags, which are very useful if you want to email a certain group of your MailChimp audience list. In our case, I'm gonna call this the list import. So we always know, hey, I've imported a list. I did it once, it was this list. And then we can add in even more tags. For example, they were also customers. And then we can press continue to match. Then we see that we have three different columns. The email address, not recognized and not recognized. So we're gonna change this. We click on this one and we're gonna change it to first name, confirm, and this one to the last name, confirm. If you have more columns, of course, you can change them and give them the right label. Then we press finalize import. Complete import. And then import was successful. Five contacts were added to our audience. Click on view imported contacts. And then we are back at all contacts and we can see that we have now imported our first contacts. Well done. This is the very start of your contact list. Now you know how to import contacts, but the real money is in the list that you've actually created yourself. So we go into here and go to sign up forms. Here we can create six different types of signup forms. Now the form builder is a form which you can send out using a single link. Can be useful, for example, when in social media, you add in a post and you send out just a single link so people can sign up for that. Then we have the pop-up form that can be added to any website. You enter in a code and then it will pop up and there it is. Then you have an embedded form. It's a custom form that you can place anywhere on your website using the code from MailChimp, very useful. The other form what we have is a actual contact form. So this way they can contact you, add in their information, but all those mails will go into the inbox over there. I don't advise you to use this one. Then we have form integration, which for example, WooCommerce or Shopify, you can use abandoned cards, which is very, Interesting, if you have a paid plan, then they will send an automated email to them, which says, do you want to still finish your order, for example. And then we also have the sign up landing page. Then you can create an entire page, but not on your own website, within MailChimp somewhere, and then people can sign up. I do not advise you to do to use the sign up landing page or the contact form. So I'm gonna show you two things, the form builder and the embedded form, which is very easy. They look very similar. Click on the form builder. 
Then in here, we can find a really simple designer for a contact form. The first thing you can see is this header. See this header when you send this link to someone else. Let me show you when I open this link in a new private window or an incognito screen, you can see that this is going to be the sign up form. That's it. Just this. There's nothing else here. If you send this out using social, for example, this doesn't look very good. So what do we do? First, we're going to change the title edit. We're going to change this to something like sign up for weekly facts and monthly discounts. Now, if you want to make it even interesting, you can add in some emojis over there, but you can also go into here and make it bold, for example, monthly discounts. And we can also actually make this a little bit bigger like this. <laughs> I think I overdid it a bit, but as you can see now, if we save and close this, and then I'm going to open this in a new private window again, you will see that this is now my sign up form. Sign up for, yeah, I definitely overdid it. <laughs> but it's all possible now, you know, how this works. We can also change a lot of things like background, gonna show you that later on. But you can also add in a message in here. For example, something like this, you can press save and close. And now there's also a message above the email address, first name and last name. You can also ask the people to fill in their email address. As you can see now, it is hidden. And you can change it, for example, to visible or hidden, or we can just delete them if you're never going to use physical addresses. In my case, we're not, so I'm gonna press delete, and, oh, and then I press delete, and then it's gone. Also with the phone number, I'm not going to call my subscriber list, but maybe you do, then you can keep it in there. The birthday is very interesting if you're going to give them discounts on their birthday with automations, you can do that. So in the future, I might be doing this, so I'm gonna keep this field inside of this. If you want to add more fields, you can choose from all these different kinds of fields, which can be very useful. So we're gonna click on uh, checkboxes, for example. And then it will be added below all our content. And then we can go on the right side to, to all change this. For example, the label is now group category 2724. We're gonna change this to, did you already subscribed? And after you've done this, we press on save field. Here we go. And now people can actually use this inside of our form. If you want to change the layout, you can also drag and drop these things and change the layout of your form. That's all possible with this MailChimp editor. Now, if I now want to share this contact form, I'm just going to use this link. And when I share this link with my followers, with my socials, they will get this subscribe form and they can just sign up for weekly facts and monthly discounts. Did you notice that this is even smaller than this? but I wanted to do this to be bigger. Well, you have to play around a little bit with it and then you can create your perfect form to share it with your audience. Then on the design it tab, we can design our form a little bit. You can change the background, you can change the body, foreground, text, link styles, in the forms, you can change the buttons, the field labels, the field text, the required, but you can also change the referral badge to the black one or the white one that fits your style, change it to the left, center or right. All these little things you can design it within the MailChimp Builder. It's not very extensive, but it's good enough to create this great link. Then we can also translate it over there. You have to put on this switch, auto translate, and then we can refine each of the auto translated phrases. For example, if I change this to your own language, in my case Dutch, you can see if this is actually correctly and you can change it if you want this. The translation works actually perfect. So if you want to fine tune it, you can do it over there and then we can press save translation settings. So now you know how this form builder actually works. Then we go back to sign up forms in here. Now we have talked about the form builder. Now let's use an embedded form and really embed it into our website. Click on this one. And then we are at the embedded form builder. Now, if you go to form fields, you will notice that we can only add in the fields that we have created in the other builder. So remember, we have to use that one to create the embedded form field. If I want all of these things, I just press on continue and then our form is ready. Then we need to embed the form code in our website. Now, this looks very complicated. 
it's just very easy. Just press copy code. Then you go to the website where you want to place it. If you're using WordPress, if you're still logging in using WP Admin, no! No, mm, no, that's not a very safe way. So please watch my tutorial about securing your WordPress website. And then you can actually use one of these. Now, if I want to embed my form on this website, I just go over here, press on this plus icon and add in a code module. Or if you have Elementor, you can also do it the same way. And then we just paste in the code we just copied from MailChimp. Then we press save. And then the subscribe form is integrated inside of my website. I would not integrate it this way, but you get the idea how it works pretty easy. And then we go return to forms listing. I have also shown you the form builder and the embedded form, but you can also use a pop-up form. Now the pop-up form builder is not that extensive as I would love to see it because you can only change this mobile banner. You need to click on this to go to the email sign up. And then when you get this and the only things you can change here is just the layout on the left side, for example, like this, but you can't add any more fields to this. So I am a bit puzzled. I would like to have the first name and last name all inside of this, but it's not in here. However, if you do want to place this pop-up on your website, you can press on connect site. Then you can add in your website URL and then you receive a code to place it in the head tag of your website. Now, every WordPress website has this in a theme, Elementor or Divi, you can add it in, in your website. That's no biggie. You can find a lot of tutorials about, about that, how to do that online. That's no problem at all. But then you only get this pop-up on your website. There are better ways to do this. So I'm not gonna use the pop-up form builder. I'm not enthusiastic about this one. If we click on form integrations, I'd like to integrate it with WooCommerce or Shopify because that would be very nice. So you go in here and then we see recommended integrations. Um, where is my WooCommerce right now and my Shopify? Click on integration on the left side. Oh, here they are. Okay, that's weird. You just need to go to integrations and here you can add them in. Well, why not talk about it right now? We have integrations, WooCommerce, Twitter, Shopify, everything. Well, for example, let's go with WooCommerce. Then if you want this WooCommerce add-on to your website, just click on connect. Then you go to woo.com and you have to actually sign in with WooCommerce to download it. It's free, but it looks like you have to pay it because when you just press add to store, then you will be asked to log in. Here we go, check out information, but it's completely free. So don't be afraid, it's completely free. Then you can add it in to your WooCommerce website and you can start building your list from within your WooCommerce store. Very convenient, I use it with two of my web shops and it works absolutely perfect. So now you know how to add subscribers to your email list. If you have your big enough list, we can send emails. How do you do that? Well, in here on campaigns, you can also press on create, then you start immediately starting to create a campaign. In the campaigns dashboard, you can see all your data from the last sent campaigns. The first thing you see is all, then you can see ongoing drafts completed or different kind of types you have created within your campaigns. But for now, I'm gonna show you quickly how to create an email campaign. It's really easy. Just press on create new. Then we want to create a regular email. We don't want to create automations as, as we need a paid plan for that one or a landing page. I would never advise you to build a website through MailChimp. Just use your website for that. Learn how to create funnels within your own website. It's way more valuable just, just to put it all inside of MailChimp. I would not advise you to do so. Just build a regular email, press on design email. Then over here, we first have to give it a name. So we're gonna press edit name. The name of this email campaign, subscribe to my channel. Save it. First, we're gonna select two. Who do you want to send it to? Do you want to send it to every contact in your mail list? Or if you click on edit, you can send it to all subscribers or create a new segment or use the different kind of tags. So only to the list import group or the customer group. For this mail, I'm gonna send it to all my subscribers in my audience. Then you can also choose not to send it to, for example, one of the tags. Very useful. And then we, of course, want to personalize the send to fields. So we want to send it to our first name, last name. 
that would be great as we have first names and last names. Press save. And then you see the from email address is matt the at wpress.com to ensure delivery will change your from address to send at mailchimp app.com. Why is this? Why are they not sending it from my own domain? It is because we have to set up a few things before we can send up from our own domain. We're going to do that in just a minute. So don't send it yet. Just wait until you've watched the complete tutorial. Then we can change the subject line. We're going to add it in. The subject is different than the preview text. So the subject of your emails is this audience import complete. But this is the preview text, this thing behind it. If you open up mails on your phone, it's even more clear. Then you can see the subject and below that is just a little bit of text. Now this text is over here, the preview text. So for example, the subject and then the preview text could be, and you can also add all these different kind of icons, of course. But the preview text is the one below your subject. It appears in the inbox after the subject line. So if we press save now, then we can see that it's over here. MailChimp will actually help you with review your subject line. Again, they don't think it's a very good subject line, of course. So you can edit it and then you can see our view our subject line guide. If you click on this one, you get a information about what the best practice is. Very interesting to read as email marketing is a art and a craft on itself. So make sure to read it before you send it out. Press save button and then we go to the send time. You can edit the send time if you have a paid plan and then you can send it on a different kind of time. On the free plan, you can only send it right now, but you do want to send it early in the morning, for example, on the Saturdays at 6 a.m. when your target audience is best for receiving emails. Then we press save. Then we go to the content. We press on design email. In here, you can see a lot of different kind of templates you can use to build your email. However, don't get confused because all these things are actually not free. Hit this switch to see only the free templates which you can use to send your email. And these are just seven. Now, also the Creative Assistant one is also a premium and you have to upgrade your plan. In email marketing, you can create the most beautiful emails that you want. If we, for example, start from scratch, we can create them ourselves. This is just a very easy drag and drop builder. You can drag your headings over there then we fill it all in we can press on done we're going to use a divider in here like this then we're going to use a image like so then you can upload your images to mailchimp and you can add them in and you can create your entire mail you can create your emails as beautiful as you want to do it i'm not going to help you design your email as that totally depends on your target audience if you for example are in the art or you have a business which sells different kind of products then you might want to style your email completely different it's completely up to you what i personally like is no logos at all just gonna delete this delete this everything my emails just look like this i just put my paragraph in here i'm just gonna start typing i say hi and then i go to merge tags and i add in the first name and a space and after that the last name comma and then I start typing my message because now it will dynamically be filled if you don't have the last name it will just be empty so that's great just keep it on this one then I would go into here and align it on the left side and I'm just gonna type in my email message over there and after that I'm just gonna change this image browse image I'm gonna upload one just put it in over there upload your image here we go and what I then do is I just make this image a link link to the web for example my youtube video and then don't forget the alt text and then the last thing i do is even more some text over there uh, pff, i don't know just for the example I'm just gonna line it out on the left side and then i'm also gonna maybe add a button over here and this button will be something like subscribe now for example you don't want to make it black i do want to make it a little bit round here we go and then i want to change the color of this button to make it beautiful like this blue over there i would like yeah that's great 
and don't add in the line. Make the line a little bit smaller. Change the color to, for example, the purple. You get the idea. Now you can create a button over there. My mails are something like this. They're very simple, very clean, very lean. I would really create really simple emails as they do the job the best for my audience. Then you can also press preview and you will see your email. Hi, test. Um, so this is the way it will look on your mobile screens. And if you want to see how it looks in the inbox, we have to upgrade our account. But this looks great. So we're going to close this and then we're going to press save and exit or you can go over here and send a test mail you can send a test mail to yourself for example just add in your email address over there and press send test here we go bon voyage and then your email has been received in your inbox press ok then we press save and exit then you can see in your mailbox this is a test message and you receive your email we have just created if you have filled all these in, you don't need to push on send because we didn't connect MailChimp to our domain name. And that's very important. So we're going to press finish later. The thing we need to do in here is go to domains over there. Click on it. And then we need to add and verify our domain because we want to send from our own domain and not from some MailChimp kind of email address or something like that. So we're going to press add and verify domain. Click on this one. Then we need to verify our email address. So fill in your email address and we press send verification email. Then you see this mail, which you can use to verify your account. Just press on this button or just copy this verification code. Copy. We're going to paste it in over there and press verify. Now our domain is in here, but we still need authentication. So we cannot send emails yet. Let's press on start authentication. Now, I don't want to use entry as I had to give them authentication to log into my hosting company. I don't want that. We're going to manually authenticate our domain. Then we get this one. Start your email authentication process. Who is your email provider? Well, in our case, we are with Hostinger. It's not in here, but we press next. Then we need to log in with your hosting provider. Then on your domain, we need to go to this DNS name servers. Click on it. Then we are at the DNS records. Now you do not want to remove or change any of these records. Why? If you do so, your website will not work anymore. But we only need to add some DNS records. So it's going to be really easy. Go back to MailChimp and then we press on next. This might look very overwhelming, but it's very easy. We're just going to create a CNAME record. Two of them actually. So the first thing is we're going to copy this one. Then we go back to Hostinger and we're going to change the type to CNAME. And then we're going to remove this at and we're going to paste in what we've just copied. So it's like this domain key.wordpressdoctor.com. Then go back to MailChimp and copy the value. Go back to here and put it in on target, paste, and keep this one like this. That's OK. And press add record. Then go back to MailChimp. In here, we're going to copy CNAME2, copy it. Add in another CNAME record, change the name to what we've just copied. It's the second one. Go back to MailChimp, copy the value, go in here, paste it in there and press add record again. Here we go. And then we click on next. Here we go. And we only have to add in a TXT record, just the very same way. Copy this one, go back to Hostinger. Then we're going to add in a TXT record, paste it in over there, and then the value. Gonna copy this one, paste it in over there, and then we just press add record. Here we go. And then we press next because we've already entered it. Then we're going to press on check status. Success! Your domain has been authenticated. Your emails will now flow freely into your customer inboxes. Excellent. If you now go back to all campaigns, then we can see that we have the draft subscribe to my channel. If we now press on edit. Now, before we send it out, we only have to change this from because it will be changed to this. We don't want it. So we press on edit from and we're going to change this email address to the at wpressdoctor.com and we press save. Now, 
This has been verified, so now we can send mails from our own domain name and not some crazy MailChimp email address that will probably end up in spam. Now you're all good to go and you can send campaigns from MailChimp. Now, when you have sent out your campaign, you of course want to see how it performs. So you go to analytics over there and now you can see some sample data just to see how this all works. You can see click rates, order rates, open rates, unsubscribe rates, all these things. Really interesting. Once you have sent out your mail, you can also go to reports and you can very thoroughly check out what your campaigns are doing in real time. So that's actually pretty awesome. If you're growing your subscriber list really fast, check out this video where I'll show you exactly how you can move to another company with even more free subscribers. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I'll always reply.